Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It's midweek. We've made it to Wednesday, October 14th. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. We're excited about a cool front, but we're well, sort of excited about this sort of good news. <laughs> we were misled by a headline that's yes. everywhere this morning. Uh, Kia made a big announcement yesterday about a new furniture buyback program, but after doing a little digging, We've uncovered that it's not happening here in the U.S. yet, but it might. I guess if it's successful overseas, they might do it. But that's, here's the deal. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I was excited at first, hoping to, you know, maybe send back some furniture. But yeah, so they will buy back old furniture in the U.K. and Ireland. And as part of its buyback initiative, the Swedish furniture retailer is offering customers in the United Kingdom and Ireland the chance to trade in their old furniture in exchange for store vouchers as part of its push. So over there, uh, 27 other countries, except for the U.S., <laughs> items can be traded in according to, according to their uh, condition with as new, uh, with products fetching up to 50% of their original price. Items in very good condition claiming 40% well used, 30% of the original price, according to IKEA's press release yesterday. So the furniture, including products such as dressers, bookcases, shelf units, chairs, and tables must be fully assembled in order to be eligible for that offer, which will launch on November 27th. Again, not at the IKEA here. No, the retailer <laughs> said it's running the program overseas in time for Black Friday's offering vouchers with no expiration date in order to address unsustainable consumption and its impact on climate change. What's interesting, though, is a number of media outlets have picked up this article and aren't plugging the fact that it's not here in America yet. But again, hopeful that this program does so well for IKEA and their 445 locations, not only here in the U.S., but overseas, does so well overseas that they actually launched this buyback program here in the U.S. at a later date. Yeah, we definitely hope so, especially after this fall where a lot of people were buying more desks and office equipment more than they would probably have oh. to in the past because of you know the pandemic. So. Yeah, IKEA said their online sales surged 45 percent of the last 12 months, driven by 4 billion visits to their website yeah, so and counting. They're not hurting right now. No. No, they're not. <laughs> For now, let's look at today's 9 at 9. Judge Amy Coney Barrett facing her second day of questioning by members of the Senate Judiciary Committee today. The committee is expected to approve Barrett tomorrow, setting up her likely confirmation by the full Senate before Election Day. Another major COVID-19 drug trial has been put on hold. Pharmaceutical giant Eli Lilly paused phase three testing on its antibody cocktail, citing undisclosed safety concerns. The Bear County Elections Office reporting more than 33,000 people casting their ballots on the first day of early voting. The huge turnout led to many voters having to wait several hours in line. The Supreme Court has ruled the Trump administration can end census field operations early. A lower court had extended it through October 31st. The Census Bureau said it will now end field operations on Thursday. Americans who receive Social Security will see a small bump in their monthly checks. The Social Security Administration says the payments will go up by 1.3 percent to account for the rising cost of living. Following Dak Prescott's season-ending ankle injury, the Cowboys have signed quarterback Garrett Gilbert off of the Cleveland practice squad. But the team says they will allow Andy Dalton to lead the team as Dak recovers. The U.S. and six other nations have signed the Artemis Accords. It's a set of principles to guide space exploration and promote cooperation among nations working with NASA. Actress Conchata Farrell has died following cardiac arrest. She was best known as Berta the Housekeeper on the hit TV show Two and a Half Men. She was 77 years old. The music world converging at the Dolby Theater in Los Angeles tonight for the 2020 Billboard Music Awards. The show was supposed to take place in April, but was postponed because of the coronavirus. And that's today's Night at Nine. Well, as Steph mentioned, at the top of the newscast, we're still anxiously awaiting that next strong cold front here in South Texas. Give us good news, Justin. It's good. And you know what? It, it may actually be cooler than we first thought, guys. Really? Really? We'll be talking about 60s for highs. Uh, it's going to be pretty incredible. It's going to feel a lot like fall here. Let's take a look at some of the current conditions. When we're talking about some of the fog out there. Visibility is 
Well, it just went away. It's pretty good here in San Antonio. We do have some fog issues uh, down to the south, though, that we got to keep an eye on. Let's look at the visibilities here locally. And uh, again, most of Bear County is uh, pretty good. You go down, though, to Pleasanton. That's where visibility is down quite a bit and then down around the Victoria area. And this will all improve pretty uh, swiftly this morning. We'll see the skies clear and sun will be out and temperatures will warm up. And today is going to be a warm day, well above average. Uh, highs in the 90s, we think. Uh, 92 here in San Antonio, mostly sunny skies, southerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then that cold front scheduled tomorrow. We're going to talk about timing, rainfall, and those chilly numbers on Friday. That's coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. See you in a while. 410 at 151. Traffic is having no problems out there, flowing smoothly in all directions, including those elevated ramps. Developing news this morning out of the Houston area, firefighters in Katy are responding to a massive fire at an apartment building in Katy. Wow, look at that. Crews telling our sister station KPRC the flames broke out around 645 this morning at a building under construction there in Houston. Investigators still trying to figure out how, how all this started. Other top stories we are following today. Police are looking for a South Texas teenage girl who they believe is in grave or immediate danger. They've issued an Amber Alert for 17-year-old Aranza Diaz Laraga. She was last seen last night in San Juan, which is in Hidalgo County, not far from McAllen. Laraga, five feet tall, weighs about 115 pounds. Police say she has blonde highlights in her hair and brown eyes. If you see her or if you have any information on the case, you're asked to call the San Juan Police Department at 956-223-2400. A 17-year-old boy is in custody this morning after Castle Hills Police say he led officers on a chase reaching speeds of up to 100 miles an hour. Police tell us it started around 5 this morning when the teen refused to stop for officers in the area of West Avenue in Castle Hills. The chase eventually ended when when the teen crashed into another vehicle head on near Greenhaven Drive. Officers tell us inside the teen's car, there was also a 27 year old woman who he said he had just met and picked up. Both were taken into custody. After that, police spent some time searching an area along Vance Jackson, Jackson looking for a gun. They say the teen had tossed out of the car. Right now, it's unclear if a weapon was found. This morning, we're still waiting to learn the name of the man hit and killed last night while running. It happened around 8 last night on the southwest side. San Antonio police says the man was running across uh, South Stars Moor near West Mayfield when he was hit by a woman driving in the outside lane. EMS tried to save the man, but he was pronounced dead at the scene. Police tell us the woman did not see that man, but she did stop after the crash to call for help. She is not expected to face any charges. In your morning headlines, a man goes on a destructive rage with a uh, rampage with a machete in hand and postal worker caught dumping mail. Taking you through a tornado and we will talk with the teenager who possesses the world's longest legs. Our David Sears is here. Good morning. And she's right here in Texas. He's taller than Justin. Wow. He's not. He's not. He's not yeah, he okay. just walked away. He's like, He's met his match. Yeah, but we'll walk with her in just a second. First security camera video catching a man walking into a building earlier this week in Rhode Island. He caught the security guards by surprise. They chased him out of the building and down the street. There they go. But the guy came back, and this time with a machete. He managed to do some damage, tossed some chairs around, breaking a window. The security guards got some help from the local police, and the man was taken into custody. He appeared before the judge, did not enter a plea. But the former mayor of Providence and the owner of that building is pleading for an increase in mental health services and support for the police officers. There is so much attention these days concerning mail in ballots. This is exactly what you don't want to hear or see a mail carrier dumping pieces of mail into the trash This is happening outside a building in Pittsburgh. One of the workers in that building saw the dump on security footage and then found the trash mail. The carrier drops off some of the mail, then tossed other bundles into the trash. Among the mail, Tony Kuhar found in the trash a ballot application and dozens of pieces of political ads. Apparently this is nothing new in Pittsburgh. A few days before trash mail was in eight garbage bags left on the curb outside of a home where a mail carrier happens to live. Despite the mail that has been tossed, the Postal Service Inspector General says these are isolated incidents and everything is good. Mail is safe. Um, you know, every once in a while you're going to have a rogue issue that's going to, that's going to happen. 
Now, the carrier who dumped the mail outside the business is on non-duty, non-pay status. The other carrier who trashed the mail on his curb being investigated as well. You are looking at one of the windshields. You're looking at through a windshield. And look, look right over here. That is a tornado. And these folks are driving right into it. This storm passing through the Carolinas. The family of four, along with their dog, driving right through that tornado. You can see the funnel cloud tossing around a ton of debris. Some of it smacking right into their truck. What's amazing, the windshield held up. Didn't even crack. They knew it was going to be rough, but never thought they would actually be in a tornado. My wife was looking at her phone, trying to figure out where is it coming from? Like, all right, tornado warning, but our alerts didn't tell us where. Yeah, after some thoughtful prayers and uh, hopes that they made it through there, they did. They got some scary moments behind them. They made it through the storm. Nobody hurt. Everybody in that truck sustained a okay, but everybody in the truck was okay, but the truck did sustain a little damage, as you saw there. And you might have heard about this young lady, Macy Curran. He's from right here in Texas. She now has the Guinness record for the longest legs in the world. We finally have some video of just how long those legs are compared to the rest of us. They're 53 inches long. She stands 6'10". So the legs make up about 60% of her height. And as you can imagine, she has a hard time finding clothes that fit. But on the other hand, she makes one heck of a volleyball player. Macy says she would like to be the world's tallest model and inspire other tall women to embrace their height. Very Six cool. 6'10"? 6'10". Finally wow. found somebody that can block Justin's shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Thank, and that's great that she's that. Uh, playing sports, being successful, and then uh, you know trying to you know go forward with a career and and being positive about it. Yeah, and trying to inspire other women who are tall. Hey, embrace it. And she's not Go far ahead. away. I just read she's up uh, in Cedar Park. Yeah, yeah, so that's pretty good. Cool. Very cool. Thanks, Thank David. You. Right now we are at 909, 73 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at nine. And a teenager from Texas is about to become one of the first females in the country to earn the honor of Eagle Scout, which she had to do to qualify. Climate change has led to one of our has led to one of our most cherished resources in South Central Texas, the Edwards Aquifer. Sarah Spivey in studio explained the deep rooted history of San Antonio's most abundant source of drinking water. Good morning. During this pandemic, schools have had to pivot. Teachers have had to change things up. What about gym class? We're going to explain right after the break. Ah, so close. I was going for the basket. It just didn't work out. And welcome back. It is 913. Teachers and school districts have had to pivot during this pandemic. So with virtual learning, how are schools making sure students are getting their physical education? Well, I have a feeling Max Massey is about to tell us. He joins us live from Coker Elementary. <laughs> Max, what's going on over there? Hey guys, well as you saw, I was attempting soccer. It's, it's not really my forte, but I'm learning. And part of that learning process, joined here, Mandy from San Antonio Sports. And you know, there's this hybrid process of learning throughout the country. You guys are actually helping out schools here in San Antonio. How are you doing that? We are. San Antonio Sports mission is to transform the community through the power of sport. And we recognize that there is, was a great need for quality instruction that can be used for distance learning. So San Antonio Sports took our iPlay after school curriculum and turned it into professionally developed sport instruction videos that PE teachers and families across San Antonio can use to get kids active at home. Perfect. And just to show you an example of what Mandy's talking about, go right here. It's as easy as for students and for families. You just click the link. It sends you to YouTube and right here. And so, Mandy, we get to see it right here on the screen. But some of the professional athletes that you're using so let me see if I can click this. I'm, I'm struggling here, guys. There we go. I'm more of a Mac person. So, yeah, some of the professional athletes that you guys are using to get kids enthused about working out. Yeah, so our soccer instructor was Michael LaHood, who is a former MLS player. For our track unit, we have professional USA track and field athlete Kendra Chambers. We also have some American Ninja Warriors who did a series for us on basic exercises. And then our basketball unit, which is coming up, is going to be former WNBA player Sophia Young. So lots of great talent. These folks have played at all skill levels, and they also have a passion for children. So Fantastic. the videos really relate to every age. Fantastic. I'm really making sure that kids stay active during the pandemic. Yeah, absolutely. So when the pandemic hit, you know, it's so hard to stay active and motivated, especially when we're all going through this new normal and unknowns. And so it was really important to us to give families and PE teachers 
resources that they could use to just help ease everybody's process and staying active. Fantastic, Mandy. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having us. And coming up at 930, guys, we are going to go through some of these lessons. Hopefully I can get better at soccer by the end of this. Mark, Stephanie. All right, Max, we look forward to that. Thank you, Max. So Max is not a Mac uh, No, he is a Mac guy. He's more of a Mac guy. Yes. Max is more of a Mac guy. Max, Say that three times fast. Max is a Mac guy. Max. Mac guy. <laughs> <laughs> he likes Mac. Okay. All right. We got it. We got and it. probably likes Mac and cheese, too. Uh, yes, Justice he does. here with a junior meteorologist on our Wednesday morning. Yes, and we got a good one this morning. This is Alexis. Take a listen. She dressed up and she's dressed like a cat. She's holding, holding a cat. She's a cat. Holding a cat. Of cats. Right. So the cat is loving this. The cats don't always want to be on. <laughs> yeah. No, but she handled it well. It was perfect. Yes. Uh, Alexis, we love it. We love the props. We love the weather. You did a great job. Thank you so much. And uh, you know, the weather is shaping up to be pretty good as we round out the week, guys. We're going to get into some cooler weather by Friday. In the meantime, Still pretty humid and we've had some morning fog 73 degrees right now. Humidity at 90% just a light wind southwest at five miles per hour. Let's look at the visibility. This is improving quite a bit. We had visibility down close to zero still there actually in Pleasanton, but it's in this area around Kennedy Beeville Three Rivers. That's where visibility is really starting to improve and we've never really had a lot of issues here in Bear County with visibility and it looks like things are getting better even at the airport. Visibility is improving a little bit, but we haven't had any of that dense fog. We can see, though, on the visible satellite picture, there is some low cloudiness there and a little bit of fog. And we'll zoom out some temperatures, 70s, 60s there in New Braunfels, 68 degrees. But you see that cloud deck, uh, 72 in New Valley, 70 in Rock Springs, 73 right now in Kennedy. I don't think this will last very long. It'll go away. We'll get lots of sun this afternoon. That's going to push temperatures up probably into the 90s. And not only that, we're going to deal with humidity. Dew points right now are in the low 70s uh, here in town. They fall off a little bit into the hill country, but it's going to be rather sticky uh, through the day today. And as we look at the current setup, here's the front that we're waiting on. Right now, still up across parts of Colorado and Wyoming. There is some cooler air behind this, some snow in the higher elevations there in the Rockies. And this front's going to be making its way into our area. Looks like tomorrow afternoon, late tomorrow afternoon. And we'll get some of that cooler air funneling in here. 35 right now in Cup Bank, 43 Boise, 44 in Casper. That's behind that frontal battery. So here's a look at our forecast again in the 90s today. But as we go into tomorrow, probably upper 80s, there will be some 90s tomorrow. And then by 5 o'clock, that front's already starting to move through the hill country. We're getting 70s behind it, some gusty winds. And then as we fast forward into Friday, uh, the data sort of goes away there. But uh, it's going to be in the 60s. We're thinking highs in the 60s in a lot of spots. When's the last time we've had highs in the 60s? April 18th. So it's been a little bit and it's going to feel very different. Those winds will be gusty, probably gusting up to 30 miles per hour. As for rainfall, we're not too hopeful about it because there's just not a lot of uh, energy with this system. But there could be a few showers right along the front and then behind it. We could get a little bit of overrunning. There could be some light shower activity Friday morning. Shouldn't amount to much. Um, and it would be nice to get some because we're, I haven't had rain in a long while now, but uh, again, it won't be widespread, I don't think. Uh, 92 degrees today, mostly sunny skies, southerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour, and 88 tomorrow with some morning clouds, and then that front comes through tomorrow afternoon. 20% chance bring with it. Windy, we're going to go overcast on Friday, and that's going to keep those temperatures down. 68 for a high. Friday night football is going to be chilly and somewhat breezy, 51 to start Saturday morning and the weekend looks great. It warms up pretty rapidly though by Sunday, guys. Wow, so a narrow window, some very fall like weather. It's gonna feel pretty cool on Friday. That pretty is cool. Awesome, yeah, I got it, Justin. <laughs> See, what there. See what I did? <laughs> yep, we sure do. Thank you, Justin. 920 right now, 73 degrees. And celebrating Halloween while giving back. How a North Carolina family is using their decorations to collect toys for the kids of deployed troops. Uh, today's Katie Science Lab requires a bit of homework, homework that Katie and David waited till the last minute to do. We'll check in with our professional procrastinators coming up to see how things are going. <laughs> coming up next here on GMSA. Careful, David. Careful.
Hey you guys, welcome back. On today's Katie Science Lab, we're continuing our Halloween theme here in the month of October, and we are gonna show you how to make oozing pumpkins, yeah. Mm. Like Mark said, this does require a little bit of work to be done beforehand. We've gotta carve a pumpkin, so that's what David and I are working on right now. David's almost done with his carving, but he's still gotta get in there and Got Ooh, it. We gotta get the gun. Because that's the, the good first, stuff. That's the first step in making an oozing, oozing pumpkin. You've got to have a carved pumpkin ready to go. So we're excited to show you how to make oozing pumpkins here. Ugh. They have these things that you can scoop, David. It's you not as near as fun as doing it with your hand, though. But okay. the glove, it kind of slides off the glove. So let's just do it with our hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those when you so, were a kid. David still has a little more work to do. I'm going to clean my, look how nice this is. I'm usually not good at carving pumpkins, but this looks pretty nice. Looks good. Hey, Katie, yeah. we, we loved it because just now David was scooping guts out through its mouth like it's... <laughs> <laughs> I hate yeah. the, the way this, ugh, the inside smells, but mine's ready to go, so we're just waiting on you, David. Maybe I'll we'll try be back scoop. in a few minutes to show you how right, we're going to make scoop. these pumpkins ooze. No pressure, Sears. Okay. No pressure. I'm good. I'm good. Hey, this thing works pretty good. Okay. All right. <laughs> Okay, some good news today. A new mural dedicated to the Lakers NBA title win is creating a stir in Los Angeles. It shows a smiling Kobe Bryant holding the championship trophy and looking over team members, including LeBron James and Anthony Davis. In the background, demonstrators holding signs that say Black Lives Matter, Education is Power, and Justice Now. A Texas teenager, part of a vanguard of girls breaking barriers, Cammie Timmons of Dallas, about to become one of the first female Eagle Scouts in the U.S. The 16-year-old joined the Scouts last year just after it announced girls could join. She's collected enough badges since then, done enough volunteer work, and shown enough leadership to join nearly 800 other girls around the country to be awarded Eagle Scout during a ceremony at the end of October. The family of North Carolina has come up with a unique way to celebrate Halloween while giving back. Tyson and Amy Rubel built a giant pirate ship in their front yard. The ship isn't just a Halloween decoration, though. It has a big cargo box that people can open up and donate a toy. The family will donate them to a nonprofit that provides toys to the children of deployed and low-income troops. Right now it's 926. There's much more ahead on GMSA at 9. Are you looking for a Halloween fun that isn't trick-or-treating? Next Door has come up with solutions for you and your family. And our Eric Hernandez will have details on this and more on Trending Stories. All right, hey everyone, in today's Climate Minute, we're going to go way back in time, talking millions of years and how the climate was. Look at this really awesome fossil of a mollusk. The same stone that makes up this fossil makes up our Edwards Aquifer. So come back in time with me and just wait until after the break. I'll be back with the Climate Minute. <laughs> And welcome back, it's 9.30. Climate change has been a hot button issue for the past two decades as scientists around the world have come to the consensus that greenhouse gas emissions have contributed to global warming. However, gradual steady climate change over the past millions of years have affected one of our most cherished resources right here in South Texas, the Edwards Aquifer. In today's Climate Minute, meteorologist Sarah Spivey takes us into the past to explain the deep-rooted history of one of San Antonio's most abundant sources of drinking water. Hi guys, and yeah, that's the key there. Gradual climate change, we can work with that as people and as an evolving species, but over the last 20 years, we've been seeing the climate change pretty rapidly. I wanna talk about the Edwards Aquifer today. You see this porous limestone, that is called karst. That's what makes up the aquifer, and that's what gives us our most abundant source of drinking water here in San Antonio. Let me take you back to the Cretaceous period, all right? 100 million years ago, yes, there were triceratops, 100 million years ago. Also, 100 million years ago, the atmosphere was about 10 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than it is today. So Texas, because of plate tectonics too, looked a lot different. In fact, San Antonio was under shallow seas at the time. So you had things like um, snail-like creatures, corals, mollusks, clams all around, and those things 
things died, and eventually they made up the limestone that we stand on today. And because of shifting plate tectonics, they made up the Edwards Aquifer, which again is our source of drinking water. So I want to talk about that for a second. This is a cross section of the Edwards Aquifer. There's that karst, that picture courtesy of Texas Parks and Wildlife. So across the hill country, you got the higher elevations, you get some rain that falls into the recharge zone, which you hear us talk about a lot. So think about Government Canyon or maybe Friedrich Park. If you're walking, you can see that karst that falls into the artesian zone where we can tap into that it builds up a lot of pressure. We build wells and that's that number that you see that we give you uh, every day here on KSAT for the aquifer level. And it's just fascinating, guys, that because of a warmer climate 100 million years ago and shifting plate tectonics, that's why people settled around San Antonio to get that fresh drinking water. I mean, yeah, we have freshwater reservoirs around here, mm -hmm. but this thing is absolutely huge. And without it, we would be in trouble. Exactly. And climate change is showing that we may not get quite as much rain in the future to recharge that aquifer. So interesting to see climate change of the past and current climate change as well. Oh, definitely. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Let's go outside with live cam and see how things are looking on your Wednesday at 933. And more than a couple of people have noted that this morning the skies over San Antonio have been a bit on the hazy side. Yeah, some fog, some low clouds moving. Great explanation of the aquifer, by the way, Sarah. And that number is dropping. We could use some rain. We need some rain. There's a little bit in forecast, but not much and certainly not enough to help us cure this drought that we're in right now. Let's look at the cloud cover outside. We have some low clouds around San Antonio. A little bit of fog here and there. These are going to evaporate pretty quick. These clouds will see the sun this afternoon and it's going to turn into a pretty warm day. A little closer look there at the clouds across Bear County already starting to dissipate a little bit. 76 degrees at the airport, 70 Bernie State, 63 Comfort, 63 in Kerrville. Nice up there, 75 in the Braunfels. And the forecast for today, it is going to be hot, well above average. 92, mostly sunny. We'll have a southerly breeze, 5 to 10 miles per hour. That wind is going to pick up big time tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening as front comes through. And then some really cool numbers for Friday. We're going to have another look at that seven day forecast here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Taking a look out at Trans Guide, there's a look at I 10 there at the Y. Things running smoothly there for right now. And at nine, our Max Massey showed us how San Antonio sports uh, are teaming up with local schools to help them stay active during this pandemic. Max joins us live from Coker Elementary. Started. Max, how does it all work? All right, guys, good morning. Like so many classes around the country, it is hybrid. So you have kids here in the class, but also kids learning virtually. Now with gym class, it's a little bit difficult. So San Antonio All Sports right. stepped in and really the helped out. Joined here, rolling, Coach so Ramos. So good morning. you are teaching a class right now. Thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Class. Thank you for coming. We can see kind of this tech setup. We can hear the kids over there. So how does it all work? So we have here uh, with our virtual class, we have, as you can see, I have my computer set up and I'm able to see all my wonderful virtual students and see how they're going along. And then we have been very fortunate Northeast bought all of the elementary PE teachers um, iPads on tripods. So I'm able to use this as more of my teach piece and they can see what's going on, but I am monitoring them as well. And so there's a really good two way interaction going on with now, this. Behind us, we have a full gym. Yes. Right here we have an office <laughs> and you are actually using this to teach soccer. I am, I am. I had started off the year using the science lab, but I felt like the kids at home, it would be good for them to be able to interact with our students that are here as well. So we um, typically take the iPad out and do the warm up with the rest of the gym. And then we come back in here and we do our lesson. And you know, the kids at home typically are doing theirs in the living room or in the bedroom. Um, so this is about as much space as they're using at home. So it works out perfect. With mom and dad's approval. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. It's a go check with mom and dad first so that we make sure nothing's being broken. Um, but it works. Perfect. All right, Coach Ramos, thank you so much. Go on with your class. All right. All right. Okay, and so in our first class, guys, we as we were saying earlier, all of this is free target. and open so to the public thanks to San Antonio here, Sports. And we're going to have all that information. Have Just head to KSAT.com. Soccer ball, and we did the whole practice Thanks of the so big step Matt. before Matt you live over at Coker Elementary here in San Antonio. Hey, trending right now on KSAT.com. Fun Halloween ideas that do not involve trick or treating and Walmart talking Black Friday shopping. Plus, look back at the past eight months of the coronavirus pandemic. Our Erica Hernandez is joining us live from her home with more on these stories. Good morning, Erica. Hi, good morning. Hey. 
morning. Well, it seems nearly impossible to recount all the controversies, milestones, dramatic steps, and chaos that has occurred since the coronavirus pandemic upended our lives. KSAT.com has taken a deep dive to list all the major events that have occurred since February in San Antonio. It all started with the first Americans from Wuhan, China, being flown into Joint Base San Antonio Lackland. Then in March, HEB began limiting products. The NBA suspended the season, schools extended closures, fiesta was canceled, and then business, restaurants, and bars closed. The pandemic, as we all know, has continued through the summer and now fall. While hospitalizations have gone down and businesses have opened back up, there are still capacity limits and face covering mandates still in place. You can take a look back at the past year by going to ksat.com slash coronavirus. Switching gears now, let's talk about Halloween. Now, if you're looking for Halloween fun that isn't trick-or-treating, next door, the social networking site for neighborhoods has a treat map available for solutions. Users can use this year's treat map to share which lower risk festivities they are participating in, including haunted decor, pumpkin projects, or a costume wave parade. Using the app, families can explore the map to see how people in their area are celebrating. A recent nationwide poll found that 73% of registered app users on Nextdoor are looking for an alternative to trick-or-treating this year. So I don't know what we're going to see here in San Antonio because I know trick-or-treating is allowed, but I do think the number of kids being out and about will be a lot less than previous years. Oh, yeah, I think that's I think a safe so assumption. Yeah. yeah, there'll be some out there, though. I think a lot of, uh, oh, yeah. I've heard a lot of families doing um, not Easter egg hunts, but like Halloween candy hunts. Oh, that's a good idea, too. Yeah, with, in their own yards. <laughs> you, you can still Whatever works. Up, right? <laughs> now, is it too early to start talking Christmas shopping? Nope. Not okay, at all. well, let's start talking. Okay. <laughs> well, Walmart is planning to spread out its traditional Black Friday deals over three weekends in November in an effort to reduce crowds in its stores during the pandemic. So here's Walmart's plan. Doorbuster deals will be reserved for online only. Deals online will kick off November 4th with new deals in stores on November 7th. The second event will begin online November 11th, followed by a similar sales event in stores November 14th. Walmart will wrap up discounts online November 25th with new discounts in stores November 27th, which is Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. Now, we are already seeing holiday deals now. In fact, as Amazon did its Prime Day sales event this week, and I can tell you guys I'm probably going to get into a little trouble with some Amazon packages on my doorstep in the coming days. <laughs> oh, in trouble with whom, Erica? <laughs> maybe my husband, but maybe, he's not watching yeah, right now. That happens. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hide them in the closet. That's what I do. I, I pick them up, I hide them, and just like, oh, yeah, I, I've had this for months. <laughs> Erica, you know you've ordered too much when you know the first name of your delivery driver. <laughs> I, I, well, you know what? They just leave them at the doorstep, so I really haven't come into contact, but it's not good. Well, you guys are about <laughs> to get close, apparently. All right. Thank you, Erica Hernandez, <laughs> live at home. Bye, Erica. 939, 76 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And will David and Katie have their homework ready on time? Looks like they do. After the break, we check in with them for this week's Katie's Science Lab. It's right out of Sleepy Hollow or I something. I know. Welcome back, 943. Earlier in this newscast, we checked in with David Sears and Dr. Katie Blake carving pumpkins outside in preparation for today's Katie's Science Lab. And now it's finally time to use those <laughs> pumpkins to make oozing pumpkins. Katie and David are live from the KSET Garden. You guys look so fall and festive out there. Mm -hmm. It, we were just saying it's kind of it's kind of humid out here, like Justin mm -hmm. was talking about. Yeah. But otherwise, we are totally in the fall and Halloween spirit. David, you carved that pumpkin quickly. Pretty good, huh? And it looks great. Meet Fred. Fred. Awesome. Do I, does that mean Fred. I have to name mine too? Yes, you do. Um, you do eventually. Igor. Igor. Okay, okay. I like okay. both. Igor and Fred. So, do you remember David a few weeks ago? Um, and you guys in the studio, we made elephant toothpaste. Right. Remember that? Yeah. And elephants now have clean teeth everywhere across the world. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. That was really fun. So we're going to make elephant toothpaste again today, Ooh. but that's what we put inside the pumpkin to make it ooze. So, a so twist. his teeth are going to be clean when this is over. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. So a twist on our elephant toothpaste, just to remind folks what you'll need for that is yeast, those little packets of yeast you can buy at the grocery uh -huh. store. You'll need some hydrogen peroxide, two or three percent is fine. Two percent is easier to find and that works just, just good as well, just as well, whatever. Dish soap and some warm water. All right, so we've got our pumpkins carved. 
And keep in mind when you're carving them and cleaning them out, you, you want to get some kind of cup or glass that is short enough or small enough that you can put in the pumpkin and then put the lid back on. So we've got these little guys. They've already got some hydrogen peroxide oh. in there. Hydrogen. Next step is going to be to add a little squirt. Is that a B? I think so. With yeah. sorry. Get away. He won't eat much. It's not part of the program. Okay. A little <laughs> squirt of dish soap here. Oh, Just a few little squirts. Any in there. David remembered last time when we yeah. did the um, elephant toothpaste, he had a little too much soap. So we're gonna do a little squirt, mix that up. I may actually do, I don't think I did enough. I did. Yeah, yours looks good, David. Thank you. So we're doing a little squirt. Mix that up. And if you'll recall, it's really important to do this quickly because with the elephant toothpaste, it's all about the reaction between the hydrogen peroxide and yeast. So a reaction between an acid and a base. So this happens quickly. So once you pour the yeast water in, we're gonna just pour it in and then try to put the lid back on the pumpkin. David, okay. are you ready? I'll go. Ready, set, go. Is yours working? Oh, here comes know. mine. I hear it. I don't know. Oh, look, look, it's oh. leaking. Oh. <laughs> Your pumpkin has rabies. Dang it. <laughs> oh, mine's going too slow. Here, I'm going to add Oh, mine's here. working just fine. Look yeah. at that. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Okay, he's going to add a bunch of more Show stuff. Show off. <laughs> Dang it. Well, it didn't foam up as much as it's supposed to, but it's, it's leaking out of there. Oh, kids Guess at home, who no look longer at that. will be an assistant starting next week. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it! What Here it comes. Here it comes. Need I'm some gonna help? dump mine out. There you go. Yeah. There it goes. Look at that. Yours is cute. Oh, there you Mom. go. Mom's excited Bleh. when she sees this. She's going, Bleh. oh man, I don't want my kid doing this. There you go. <laughs> look at that. Push it out. There you oh, go. Yeah. Good job, Why out of it wow. now. Look at that. <laughs> You're pumpkin out a wild night, Katie. Yeah. Well, a little, well, well Katie, that, that's a good reminder, though, to uh, parents and kids at home that it might take a couple of tries that, you know. Yeah. I think what I cool. would do is maybe even get a smaller glass than this okay. so that it doesn't have so much room to travel up before going out. So, yeah. Yeah, well, give it a few tries. I bet, I bet we'll have a lot of well, success. You guys made an absolute mess. No wonder you're outside. <laughs> See all the, the foam car. in there, though? Look at all that. That's pretty cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was yeah. fun. Yeah. It needed an extra little push. So this is just something fun that, you know, I, I know Halloween is different this year, but this is something safe and fun that the kiddos can, can do at home. Okay. I think we'll be trying that at home, Katie. All Hope you all enjoy. All the details on ksat.com. Yes? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Oh, Fred's <laughs> got some clean teeth now. <laughs> all right. Say goodbye, Thanks, Fred. Thanks, guys. All right. The Pride of Texas Tech, Katie Blake and David Sears. Thank you very much, guys. Awesome. And then uh, they mentioned it was a little humid out mm -hmm. there. It is. Mm -hmm. It's. Uh, I'm, I'm sure they're, they're a little steamy in their lab coats, mm -hmm. Justin. Yeah, Horn. no doubt. And all the kids are going, that's awesome. And all the moms are going, yeah. No, that's what, <laughs> uh, moms yeah. are like, let's take it out. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's definitely good, fun. It's a good place to be. Uh, it is a little humid, as those guys mentioned, and it's going to stay humid through much of today. Let's look at the time lapse. Boy, you can see those clouds just race in there this morning. Uh, and now they're already starting to thin out. Not a big surprise. We're going to see these clouds go away pretty quickly. 76 degrees at the airport. Humidity is at 82%. South southwesterly winds at about 9. But look at the dew point, 70. That's why it's so sticky outside. And that number will come down a little bit this afternoon but you'll still kind of feel it if you're going to be out and about. There's the cloud cover already starting to shrink a little bit. We'll see most of that go away, but still cloudy in Hondo and Pleasanton. Still a little fog out there, too, in spots. 67 in Kerrville, 64 Comfort, 69 Canyon Lake, 70s elsewhere, including here across Bear County. 75 Kennedy, 75 in Gonzales, and 75 down there in Catua. Here's a look at some of the fog visibility still down in Pleasanton, down to about a quarter of a mile. That should improve pretty rapidly. Also seeing some fog from LaGrange over to Victoria. Everybody else doing well. Uh, dew points, yeah, they're up there. They're in the oppressive category. Not very fall like today at all. Uh, so not only are we going to see the humidity, we'll also see the heat. So it's going to feel uh, almost summer like really today. And uh, we look at the setup. We're out ahead of this cold front. This is the front we've been waiting on. This is the front that's going to bring the relief for us Thursday evening. And then as we get into Friday, for sure, there is some snow behind it in the upper elevations, some rain, and this is going to draw down some cooler air into Texas. Uh, otherwise, there's not a whole lot going on. We've been talking about how quiet this weather pattern has been. It sort of stays that way, at least until this front comes through. As far as the winds go, we are going to see winds really pick up. They'll be a little bit breezy this afternoon. But they'll really start to pick up tomorrow evening. And you'll see this actually continue to go up as we get into 
uh, tomorrow night and even Friday morning. So some gusty winds with this front for sure. 90s today as we get into tomorrow. This shows a 80s low 80s around 4 o'clock. I think we'll probably be in the upper 80s before this front comes through. But behind it already dropping into the 70s by tomorrow afternoon and then the front uh, pulls through. This model's on one of it's, it's one of the colder ones. It shows uh, mid 60s two o'clock on Friday. We're going upper 60s for highs. That's it. 60s all day long on Friday. And one reason for that is I think clouds are going to stick around. It'll probably be cloudy, if not mostly cloudy, uh, into the afternoon. And with uh, you know, clouds in place and that cold air coming in, uh, it's going to be pretty chilly on Friday. As far as rain goes, it would be nice if those clouds would produce some rain. There is a small chance of that. This computer model does show a couple showers developing right along the front and then behind it. Sometimes you get that overrunning. So we're going to leave some showers in the forecast Thursday night, Friday morning. Right now, about a 10 to 20 percent chance. So it's not great. It's not going to amount to much. 83 noontime, 92 your high today. So well above average with mostly sunny skies and a southerly wind. Tomorrow, we'll go 88. Morning clouds clears out. That front is due sometime in the late afternoon. 20 percent chance of rain as it comes through, and that lingers over into Friday morning. And then windy on Friday, 68 the high. That's it. 51 Saturday morning. And then a fantastic weekend on tap. Highs in the 70s on Saturday. Yay, sweaters, jackets, blankets. This is very exciting. And very exciting. And she's talking about inside. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. 951, 76 degrees. We'll be right back. Good morning. Hi, guys. Coming up on live, we'll chat with our good friend, Carrie Ann and Nava. Yep, she'll tell us everything you need to know about Dancing with the Stars. See you soon on live. Thanks, Ryan. Hey, taking place amid a pandemic, this election day will be unlike any other. The road to the election has been full of roadblocks and detours. So what will election day look like this year? It's what the KSAT Explains team sought out for this week's episode. Tomorrow on GMSA 9, Myra Arthur and RJ Marquez break down their findings. And it is 77. We'll be up around 92 this afternoon. A very hot day, but our transition days tomorrow. The cool weather gets here on Friday. Highs in the upper 60s. It, these guys. it is the fiesta medal that almost was, but is. It <laughs> is. A Providence Catholic High School senior has designed the winning design for the KSAT Fiesta medal. Uh, this year, and she finally got to take a look at one in person. And there she is, Vienna Nguyen. She's 17 years old and was selected as a winner despite that cancellation. Uh, so she went ahead and found out about this through her high school's alumni director and her internship teacher. Yeah, Nguyen says she got the inspiration from two of her previous winning Providence Fiesta medals, and this time incorporated the case at Loco in an image that represented KSAT itself. So she said, I thought a news microphone and camera with the logo on the mic would be somewhat clever. And to represent KSAT's location, I drew the silhouette of downtown San Antonio. Oh, it looks so good. That's and cool. I, I, I would love if we could kind of bring it back in some form or fashion for the 2021 Fiesta medal since everything got Turned all sideways this year due to coronavirus. I, I hope so. I know a, a lot of uh, events and winners of certain contests are will be coming back for 2021. So hopefully yeah. we can bring this back as well. Hope so. But again, congratulations to Vienna Wynn over there at Providence for her third winning design. Yes, very talented She's artist. She's on her way. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, guys.